the best in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Hoke Show. Right, everybody, we are back live here at the World Series of Poker. It is the main event. Like you didn't know that already. Well, if you didn't, shame on you. He obviously hasn't read any posts on Twitter for the last, you know, three days. But we are having a blast out here at the WSOP. We are getting down the home stretch. We've got about a week to go here. Of course, uh, we will be still coming at you live all the way to the last card. And, of course, don't forget, day seven coverage is start to finish. We'll be on about uh, about a half hour, 45 minutes before play begins, and we'll go all the way until a November nine, excuse me, November 9 has been set. Always a fun show. If you miss it, you, you have no idea. Your world is going to come crashing down, so you better be here for that one. Along with all our great coverage, we're going to stay up, keep you updated on everything going on here at the World Series the rest of the way. Of course, don't forget, we have all our uh, shows from the world series up on youtube if you haven't checked them out just search mark hoke and they're going to all be right there for you so check them out we've had some amazing uh, guests unbelievable happenings on the show it has been something else this year and uh, we would love to have you take a look at those of course uh we're we have the wsop highlight reels got another one coming up here for you probably uh either tomorrow or thursday uh, which is going to be featuring our my 500th show I'm very excited about that so you can uh, give that a listen, and we'll have a couple more before this is all said and done. I can find it at Mark Hoke Show on iTunes or on markhokeshow.podbean.com. That's right, podbean.com. That's uh, one of the top podcast hosting sites in the world, so make sure you catch us over there. Also on Twitter, Mark Hoke Show, and Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show as well. All right, so we have some interesting bust-outs and some... Uh, you know, with some major ramifications uh, here at the World Series. But I do want to take the time to talk about a couple things going on uh, outside of here before we really dig into what's happening here at the World Series. And the first thing that I really want to make sure that we get the word out on this is they have announced the memorial and uh, poker tournament for Chad Brown. Of course, uh, Chad just passed away a few days ago. And here is your information about what is happening there. Uh, the Chad Brown Memorial Ceremony and Inaugural Charity Poker Tournament will be hosted at Minions Gambling Hall and Hotel sun on Sunday, July 13th, 2014. Uh, it's going to be hosted uh, by Vanessa Russo, uh, Jennifer Winter, and let's see, and Bo Urell, and Lupe Soto will be uh, handling the duties for this one. Uh, so date and time is July 13th at 4 p.m. Uh, of course, uh, that'll be the memorial ceremony. And I'm sure we're gonna, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of memories and tears and emotions at that one. Uh, as, of course, several people will be speaking about Chad. And, uh, so should be a, a great time to reflect on you know life of one of the, the great guys in poker. And uh, certainly hope you'll be able to attend that. And then, of course, we have... The inaugural charity poker tournament, uh, that is going to start at 6 o'clock. Uh, no Limit Hold'em rebuy poker tournament, uh, 200 plus 25 buy-in, plus unlimited $50 rebuys for the first six levels. Uh, $50 deal on, uh, dealer add-on will be available. Uh, the buy-in will be divided between the prize pool and the charity. Uh, all the rebuys will go to the charity, and Matt Savage is going to be coming over to run the tournament. So that's great news. Um... And I'm just looking to see what the charity is. Um, I be, It looks like it's going to be going to the T.J. Martell Charity Foundation. So uh, there's your uh, charitable information on that. Um, and if you want to get more information about it, of course, uh, personally, it's downtownchadbrown.org. Uh, and there is a press release on the website. Uh, you can also uh, get more information at tjmartell.org. Uh, that's T J M A R. T-E-L-L dot org. 
So if you are interested in going over and you know, kind of you know, saying goodbye to Chad and of course, uh, you know, staying with some, hanging out with some great people and and sharing those memories, you know, and uh, remembering a great guy, and uh, of course, help out with the this charity tournament as well. Um, make sure you, you know, get over there to Binion Sunday Memorial Service at four, and the charity poker tournament uh, is at six. So. We appreciate you getting in there, and of course, we'll be promoting that constantly uh, throughout the uh, next few days. So, uh, but uh, you know, if you can go, please attend, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, I'm not sure. If, unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to get there or not, given the show schedule. But we'll give it a shot. Couldn't hurt for me to sneak out of here. You, you know, we'll we'll see what we can do. So that's your information on the Chad Brown Memorial Ceremony and Inaugural Charity Poker Tournament. Once again, Binions. Memorial service at 4 on Sunday, and the tournament is at 6. All right. So glad we uh, made sure we got that mentioned. Now, what do you say we talk uh, a couple more things here and then get into the World Series? Uh, don't forget the Mark Hoke Show is going to be headed to another event, and that will be up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, the CPT Summer Showdown. Ten big events over 11 days will be uh, – one of the partners up there with Ivy Poker, Poker News, and Global Poker Index. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, July 24th through August 3rd, including a $3,300 high roller and a main event and over a half million dollars of guarantees through this series. So it should be a great one. Go to Canadian Poker uh, Canadian Poker Tour TV. You can get discounts on your airfare, hotel, the whole ball of wax. So we'd love to see you up in Calgary as I'll be invading Western Canada for the first time with the show. Hopefully they'll let me back in the country. They did not They did in the East, so hopefully we'll be okay in the West. But uh, looking forward to seeing you up there. Uh, tomorrow, don't forget uh, KLAV, 1230 AM. Uh, our show schedule is going to be a little bit different because of a few things going on. First, we want to get back in the studio, so I'm probably going to swing down here for a little bit and then head over uh, to the studios in KLAV so we can avoid any issues remote issues we've had out here as we want to have a nice clean show and uh, you know, certainly a good chance to do that Wednesday at 3 o'clock on KLAV and of course all over the world everybody's asking me well you know if I don't live here can I hear the show of course you can KLAV 1230 am.com it's KLAV 1230 am.com we'll uh, see, either see you on the uh, on your radio dials in Las Vegas or on the internet but we'd certainly appreciate you tuning in uh, Still lining up the guests, but I'm sure we're going to have some good ones for you, so make sure you join us there. Uh, also, of course, uh, let's see. Yeah, and, yeah, we'll we'll stop there. I don't want to get too sponsory right now, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll mention those guys before the show's out. Let's take a look at these two major bust-outs that happened this afternoon and some major implications on the Player of the Year race. As I saw Brandon Shaq Harris actually got to make the first announcement with him busting out, which is unfortunate. But Brandon Shaq Harris is out. The leader in the Player of the Year points eliminated. Uh, just uh, had some bad timing, as he said. And he has gone by the boards. And so the door was open for George Danzer to take the lead. Did not happen. George Danzer also eliminated this afternoon. So your top two in the Player of the Year race are out here at the World Series of Poker. And, uh, you know, of course, we have the... Asia Pacific WSOP coming up here a little bit in a couple of months. But uh, I know that I asked Brandon if he was going, and he is going to go. And he said, I'm going to be uh, going to be boning up on my no limit, hold him a little bit, because, of course, he's a great mixed games player. But uh, And apparently George Danzer has also confirmed that he will be going to Europe so or uh, to Asia. So they will be uh, dueling it out in Australia to try and get some extra points and hold off the rest of the pack here. But of course, so one of the yeah you know, the interesting part about the uh, player of the year formula, uh, you know, both these guys overall would have a, have a pretty significant lead. But at the world in the World Series of Poker main event, there's no multipliers or anything like that. It's strictly based on your place of finish. So these guys, just because they played the main event, score 25 points. Uh, Anybody in the bottom half gets 25 points in player of the year for WSOP. The next 30% get 50. 
the remaining 20%, except for the final table, gets 75. And then after that is where you really start getting into the big bucks, no whammy section. Uh, ninth gets 100, eighth gets 120, seven gets 140, uh, six gets 165, five gets uh, 190, fourth place gets 220, third gets 250, second gets 350, and the winner scores 500 points. So there are a lot of players that are still in the running for player of the year, even without the Asia Pacific events. And of course, it'll be settled here. Uh, and then looking at the uh, current player of the year standings, of course, Brandon Shaq Harris at 752. Danzer is at 745.2. John Hennigan, uh, who won the Poker Players Championship, is at 557. Daniel Negreanu, 449. Richard Ashby, 413, Brock Parker, 406, Calvin Anderson, 398.2, J.C. Tran at 374. Out of the top ten, five of them still remain in the main event. Hennigan, Negranu, Coleman, Bonomo, and J.C. Tran all there. Obviously varying needs of points for these guys. Uh, like J.C. Tran pretty much needs to, I want to say, get the win here. At the 350 out, let's see, his uh, second is 350. So that's going to be, bear with me. Sorry, I've got something on my screen here I need to clear out. Yeah, JC would need the win at this point. But, of course, once again, we have we have 10 other bracelet events coming up in Australia. So these, uh, you know, these could change. But it'll be interesting to see if any, you know, how many of these guys are going to plan to give chase uh, to player of the year. Uh, but, of course, the, all, the other thing you got to remember is that these guys, anybody that at the moment is within 500 points, or 499 points of Brandon Shaq Harris, has a chance to move it up and steal player of the year. The, that list goes very deep. Of course, uh, Shaq, Brandon Shaq Harris right now at 752, so anybody at about at 253, just based on the main event, could come up and steal away player of the year and that takes you a long way down the list uh you know, obviously not that likely but you have 250 actually uh, 252 actually extends uh all the way down to around 53rd place uh john racener at 250 conceivably at 253 50 could end up being player of the year uh but once again all these guys uh, really would need to win the main event to take over the player of the year race. So this is going to be a wild one. And, you know, it, it, it always drove, of course, it drove people over to Europe last year. Uh, we, we all remember the year Ben Lamb won player of the year. and uh, But Phil Helmuth went over to uh, Europe and, uh, you know, started picking up some points. And Lamb decided he better get over there and play the main event to try and hold him off. And it, it certainly made for some drama over at the World Series of Poker Europe. But this time around, uh, these guys are certainly going to be uh, a bunch of these players are certainly going to be looking for it, and I and I think you'd really realistically, you know, have to, you know, have to say that the guys, uh, if you're looking at top five finish, one ninety out, could make it interesting. And uh, you're looking at one hundred ninety points out, though, uh, that would be at what five five sixty two to tie. So very few players in that range right now, um, including Daniel Granu, not in that. Uh, really, that would leave Hennigan, Danzer, and Harris. So pretty much going to have to make the final table and at least, for most of these guys, get a top three finish to have any chance of catching Harris or Danzer. But it's going to be a wild race, and uh, especially the Harris and Danzer both plan to go over there. That means if one of these other guys, Hennigan, Granu, Coleman, uh, Bonomo, Ashby, Parker, whomever decides to give chase, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna have to either be sitting here at that final table, or they're gonna have to make the little that little jaunt for 24 hours over to uh, the Asia Pacific Series to try and pick up some extra points on that. So it'll be a, f a fun race, but of course we'll be watching all of these players that are still contending as they weave their way through the main event. So should be a lot of fun. We'll follow that race as it goes on. Let's 
check out some of the other action. And uh, players uh, headed on break here. I can tell it's under 10 minutes. Unfortunately, they got the small 